Calaveras County, and welcome to another edition of Mondo Calaveras. I'm your host, Mike Taylor. Now, if there's one thing we all can agree on, we've had a normal winter. Now, I say normal because some of you who haven't been in the county as long as some of the rest of us have know that this winter has been about what we usually used to get here in Calaveras County. And what is that thing that we're getting? Water. My guest today is Joel Metzger from the Calaveras County Water District. Joel, you are the public relations community, uh, excuse me, customer service manager. That's the term. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm kind of wearing multiple hats over there. Yeah. So I, I do handle the public relations for the district. And I also have managed the customer service department for some time in community relations. So I, I'm definitely uh, one of the main liaisons between the district and all of our customers and the public. Okay. Yeah. And CCWD is, well, easily the largest water and wastewater district in the county. Actually, how big is it? Well, um, we cover the entire county. It's kind of weird. Uh, through LAFCO's sphere of influence, we actually do cover the whole thing, but we only have uh, six water service areas and then 12 uh, wastewater service areas. Oh, okay. So uh, just to put some towns to those areas, um, one of our areas is up in the Arnold area. Mm -hmm. So you'll see uh, us in Camp Connell, Dorrington, Arnold. We also cover Forest Meadows. Um, then you come down and you skip uh, Murphy's because that's U P U D. U P U D. You skip mm -hmm. Angels Camp because yeah. that's City of Angels. <laughs> down Highway Four to Copperopolis. We cover Copperopolis Water and Sewer. Then head over to Highway Twelve Twenty Six area. <laughs> uh, Rancho Calaveras. We serve water to all of them. And then, oh, that's right. Okay. Yep. Lock Antenna uh, Water and Sewer Gold Creek. Um, City of uh, or Town of Valley Springs is not us. They have their own you. little yep. water district. Uh, then you head up to San Andreas. Not us either. Nope. CPUD, CPUD. <laughs> uh, but then you get up to West Point, Wilseyville. We do cover West Point, Wilseyville okay. with water and sewer. And then the tiny town of Sheep Ranch is served <laughs> by us, which is actually kind of a cool system. White Pines and Arnold is the, sh the Sheep Ranch water supply. So we store water in White Pines. Oh, really? Release it, goes all the way down San Antonio Creek. And then we have kind of a flume ditch system, and then we pump it up out of the canyon to Sheep Ranch. So that's kind of one of our... Wow, I didn't even know that. Yeah. I mean, we've... Well, weave in my other life here in the county I've seen the the Utica flume mm -hmm. which you know is actually not part of CCWD system right it's, it's not it's just amazing how many different water providers there are but the flume is actually the Utica water and power authority mm -hmm. and it is um, a partnership that provides water for city of angels camp and Murphy's um, and at one point CCWD was kind of part of that venture but we're no longer part of it okay the final service area Area for water is Wallace. Um, Wallace, just at the end of the county, kind of down by Comanche, um, and that's our only um, service area that is groundwater. So we have groundwater wells there that we pump out of the aquifer and serve Oh, them. okay. Yeah. And you do sewer down there too, or just water? We don't do sewer for okay. um, for that uh, the the Wallace Lake Estates, but we do have some sewer out on South Worth Road. The sewer, like I said, twelve different areas. I was going to say that's that's scattered all over. It's the place. scattered all over, and some of them are only like ten customers. It, it's one of those. Hmm things where because CCWD has the responsibility for the whole county, if there's something that the state says, this isn't working, guys, we're spilling sewage, someone needs to take this over, guess who gets to do guess it? Guess who gets the call? CCWD, huh? yeah. Which is more complicated, maintaining the water purity or maintaining the strict standards the state has for the treated effluent that a lot of times is discharged into creeks or sprayed onto fields? Yeah, I'd definitely say that um, they both have strict regulations, but we are very fortunate to have some of the purest water that you can find anywhere in the world, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, our watershed, um, especially the Stanislaus and McCollamy, is coming out of pure granite hillsides for the most part yeah. and, and filtered through meadows. And I mean, our water quality, you could almost just drink it. So we have to do very mm -hmm. little uh, just to make sure that it's safe. The, the effluent, on the other hand, you know, um, we certainly have to do a lot of things to meet state standards. And um, the regulations are getting more and more stringent, you know, almost every single year. I was going to say every like. year another 10 reams of paper come out. And yeah. that's just one law about 
<laughs> right. And, yeah. and I'll tell you what, Mike, the um, the fines for spilling, you know, if, if we mm-hmm. have some kind of unanticipated emergency blockage or a pump doesn't doesn't uh, turn on when it's mm-hmm. supposed to, you know, as soon as you spill a drop of that, that, that sewage, you're immediately, you know, have to report that to the state and they'll come and, you know, they'll either give you some strict warnings or in many cases they'll actually fine you. And so that's why we need to have redundant systems, multiple pumps, and our operators are just always checking the systems and using what's called SCADA, which is kind of a Mm. computer system that, um, you know, it's a remote system. And so we can monitor things remotely using computers. And if there is a spill or a blockage or something, we can usually get notified very quickly. But, but, you know, those spills do happen and we do have to respond to them and report them. And um, so it's, it's something that's very expensive. Um, having 12 different systems means we have to have certain permits for every single one of them. I was going to say, that's a, that's a myriad of permits, and that one sprays the effluent, that one releases into the creek, that one, I mean, it's right. all over the place. Right, yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy. And, you know, one thing that the state has been saying, and I agree with this, is maybe we shouldn't be, be doing these spray fields because we're ending up just spraying perfectly good water onto a meadow, and then off it goes. Now, at least up here in the mountains, it's going back into their groundwater and probably coming out, you know, downriver so it can be used. But uh, recycled water is something the state really believes in. And, you know, it, we, we are doing a good job with a lot of all, our golf courses. Saddle Creek gets takes all of our recycled water from uh, the Copperopolis area. Mm-hmm. They use that and more. They use some raw water from Lake Tullock, too, to keep oh, their wow. greens going. Um, Lock and Tenna Golf Course takes all of our recycled water from down in the Valley Springs area. Hmm. So that's something we're really proud of. But we still do have some spray fields, like in our Vallecito plant, our Arnold plant. You know, we're still doing some spray fields on on those ones. The uh, You know, and speaking of, of sewer treatment, what is the biggest individual system in those 20? Is it Copper Cove down in that area? or So um, the, the single biggest plant is actually our Ebbets Pass water treatment plant, um, oh, okay. just because that is just such a huge system. Um, it's located in the Avery area. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of if you ever know where the Swimming Hole Candy Rock is, if you're on the way there, you'll see a big giant water tank and, uh, and some towers and things of that nature. And that's, that's our biggest water treatment plant, closely followed by our Jenny Lynn water treatment plant. Uh, okay. down off below New Hogan Reservoir on the Calaveras River. And then our Copper Cove um, water treatment plant is also quite large. But Ebbets hmm. Pass just has so many customers, um, even though a lot of them don't mm-hmm. live there full time. Yeah. We have to build plants to meet what's called peak demand. Sure. So, so when everybody's here in the summer. Fourth of July weekend. Oh, okay. That's when we get it. <laughs> when you suddenly watch the tanks dropping. And, <laughs> and, and so, you know, our operators have to prepare for that and get ready. And, mm. you know, it's, it's kind of, it seems silly, but it, we have all this massive infrastructure just getting ready for Fourth of July. And then for a lot of the rest of the year, you know, we were almost overbuilt in a way. But you have to have fire flows and you have to be able to meet peak demand. And so mm-hmm. that's the way that we can make sure we keep our customers safe. So that's, that's definitely a big one. And I wanted to share something something with you just because water systems are so crazy and cool up here we get the water out of a nine mile um, underground tunnel that um, is bored through the granite that goes kind of under Avery and and the water actually comes out of a tunnel tap that bores straight down into the granite and we use the natural gravity pressure carrying the water through that tunnel to bring it up and um, and take it to our treatment plant and where that tunnel's going is to a hydro facility out Camp Nine Road and um, it's called the Collierville, Collierville. Power Plant mm-hmm. yeah so that that um, you know it's it's going through the tunnel we're taking a little bit the flume that that provides water to Murphy and Angel's Camp, the Utica flume we talked about, that also takes water out of that tunnel and runs it down. <laughs> and so what we're doing is we're taking a little bit of the San Anastas River water and we're bringing it up out of the canyon using gravity and then we're running it down Angel's Creek. We're providing water to our customers. And then once we're done with it, um, whatever's left going through Angel's Camp goes right back in the New Maloney's where it would have ended up anyway, including the power generation Makes water. Sense. So it's kind of a cool project. And people don't know this, but CCWD owns the Collierville Power Plant. You know, it's about a 150 megawatt plant. It's hmm. huge, but it's operated by an agency called Northern California Power Agency. NCPA. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So they operate it. We own it, and all the water rights used are, are belong to CCWD for that. And you can't quite charge enough for that electricity to offset the the rates for water and sewer. <laughs> well, un- unfortunately, we actually don't get to sell that electricity. NCPA, yeah, NCPA does. Yeah, it does. I, it, you know, and you'd have to go way back into the you know 80s and 90s 
companies to kind of figure out how all those agreements were made. But um, we do we do get some revenue, kind of like um, a fixed revenue from mm -hmm. them. And the the other cool thing is um, we we do get kind of a discounted rate as a public utility, and that's actually coming out of the giant. Uh, power turbines and New Maloney's Reservoir Dam, mm. and so we're part of uh, you know the schools and government buildings. Sure, yeah. We all get that discounted rate. Thank goodness, because without that, it would be so expensive to run all those pumps. Well, and the same thing to operate schools. They, you yeah. know, if they were paying PG and E's rates, you know, I'm just trying to run my extension cord over to Calaveras High School, and <laughs> <laughs> right, wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, speaking of, of the recycled water, right out of Calaveras High School, right when I graduated, I moved down to Phoenix. And it was a little bit strange to learn that what went in one end and came out the other came back in the other end. Because Phoenix, even back in the 80s, it was a recycled water system. Basically, the, there was a big giant, it looked like a prison, but it was a big rock wall that... The water treatment plant was behind that, and they treated all the sewage and churned out clean water. Is that something that we may be headed for? I would imagine that there are some metropolitan entities in California that are pretty strongly exploring that. At least I would hope so, considering the drought we've had for the past several years. But is that something that we might get to in a rural area like Calaveras County? You know, the biggest challenge with what you're talking about is what I call the Yuck factor. Yuck factor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, Mike, if if we could just kind of get past the yuck factor, yep. we would be doing this all over the place. Not just in California, but you know, wherever it made sense throughout throughout the world really. So there are two yeah. two ways that we're looking at it. One is called indirect uh, potable reuse. That's when you take that recycled water that you've treated, usually to a very high standard, and then you'll like put that in a basin where it can kind of sink down and percolate back into the groundwater, oh, okay. back into the aquifer. So you're kind mm -hmm. of doing your, your strong filtration using your facilities, and then you're using kind of the sands, gravels, and dirts as it filters back down into your aquifer. Then you pump that right back up, and then you treat it through your water treatment plant. So you're, you're getting a lot of benefit out of that water, mm -hmm. but that, that actually isn't as efficient as what's called direct potable reuse, which is where you just... The yuck factor. <laughs> the yuck factor. And that's basically <laughs> the pipe coming out of your wastewater treatment plant goes right back into your water treatment plant, and then you have drinking water. Well, every one of the sewer district managers who I've ever spoken with in Calaveras County has told me the same thing, and that is that the water we are dumping into the creek is cleaner than the water in the creek. You're absolutely right. The the um, turbidity levels, you mm -hmm. know, that's kind of like how many particulate matter is in there and level of organics that might still be left in the water. Mm -hmm. The treatment um, technologies that we have now, you're getting an amazingly pure product. I mean, like you said, it really is better than most of the, the raw water coming into plants from streams and aquifers and things mm -hmm. of that nature. And it doesn't have things like uh, minerals that you don't want in there. It doesn't have all these organics floating around. Maybe it doesn't have the taste and odor that you have to you have to treat out. So it can be a really good starting point mm -hmm. compared to what you're what you're dealing with. Because it's less expensive to treat. Well, and you already have it. You know, you don't yeah. have to go rebuy that water. It's mm -hmm. all right there. And, and what we're doing right now is, um, you know, most of the California coastal cities are just flushing all that back out in the ocean. Mm -hmm. But you're seeing cities like San Diego, um, City of Ventura, um, other other cities who really have to buy a lot of their water and and they have to import that. Um, they are really strongly already pursuing the indirect potable. The direct potable is something that our state government has not been able to get its act together and actually pass regulations that say, mm. if you're going to do this toilet to tap sort of a thing, yeah. this is what you need to do to follow those guidelines. They really haven't given us the guidelines that we need, and that's been a big wow. impediment. Hmm. And, and I think that, that um, they're approaching it cautiously for good reason. When you have recycled water, there's all kinds of crap in there. Um, pun intended. Pun intended, <laughs> and more that you don't know. Something like a pharmaceutical or, or heavy oh, metals mm -hmm. or things that yeah. you know you really want to make sure that you can guarantee that the treatment methods in place are getting all of that out. And I think what the state wants to do is really just double extra check to make sure that they're able to do that. Could a district like CCWD that's operating both kinds of plants, could you just say the outlet from a sewer treatment plant, dump it into the intake of the water treatment plant and, and sort of, I guess where I'm going with this is, never mind what the state says, we're dumping the 
treated effluent is what I'll call it. I know you you probably have a much more technical term no, for it. No, that's it. Yeah, that's good. But, so you dump that into the Stanislaus <laughs> River, just a little bit above that intake where the pipe is to, to feed the Collierville, and then you've, you know, basically kind of done an end around, if you will. I would say not right now. Um, again, the, the standards are just so strict and the fines are so mm -hmm. high. Um, we, we don't have the, the ability to do that legally right now. Yeah. The, the other thing um, that is a little bit different for Calaveras County is we are a, a source county for water. We're at the headwaters. Mm -hmm. um, we are very fortunate that those who came before us were able to secure water rights. George Hubbardy. <laughs> that not not only are able to meet our needs right now, but are actually able to meet our needs in the future. So we, you know, mm -hmm. we're extremely fortunate. Just as a, a, another example of people who maybe didn't do that planning would be Tuolumne County. They actually have no water rights as a county or as a hmm. Tuolumne utility district. Okay. Um, they rely on contracts with people like PG&E out of Pinecrest. Wow. And so that's a much more precarious position. So mm -hmm. what, what we're trying to do is use the water rights that we have. If we were short on water or had to buy every water, every drop of water that we used, it would make a lot more sense for us to start investing in these recycled water, potable, indirect or direct okay. reuse. But we, we really have enough surface water to meet most of, you know, all of our needs at this point and, and even into the future. So I, I think that um, it wouldn't be our highest priority, mm -hmm. but what we would like to do is put put our recycled water to beneficial use. And like the, the sure. golf courses we've done, mm -hmm. there's also opportunities for ag. Um, if you can treat it to a high enough standard, you can irrigate vineyards with it. You can do hmm. orchards, things of that nature. Okay. Um, you can even do um, irrigated pasture for cattle and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And so we'd like to explore that because I think that uh, our water resources can be put to even more beneficial use. And one thing we want to explore is not just treated water, but how can we just convey the river water itself, just called raw water, no treatment necessary, mm -hmm. and just get it to agricultural uh, people who want to be growing more crops in this county? Mm -hmm. That wouldn't just be good for our economy, but it would be good to protect our water resources to say, hey, we're putting this to beneficial use, and, and here's what we're doing. Sure. Yeah. Now, that's actually a nice transition to kind of what we sort of talked about wanting to cover today, which is okay, we've had this normal winter and, you know, we're seeing water in New Maloney's, which is such a foreign sight lately. It's, yeah. it's, it's truly frightening to me. Yeah. Um, and seeing, you know, water in New Hogan Reservoir is awfully nice too. Where do we stand with regard to what we're going to face in the summertime. I mean, I would think that residents of this county kind of, I guess it sounds a little harsh, but learned the lesson and we've learned to be more water wise. You know, it's not necessary to be out there washing your car every weekend, you know, with water and not the good rags. But where do we stand with regard to some of those reductions that were mandated from the state and those kinds of things? Yeah, so um, that's just really important that we talk about this because it's been kind of a moving target. Uh, the state mm -hmm. has has really come down hard, and, and they, they mandated that we cut back pretty significantly in the last couple of years. But the current situation is that CCWD was able to lift all emergency water conservation restrictions oh, that, we, that we had put people under. So at mm -hmm. this point, um, the, you know, you don't have to worry about about watering your lawn on a specific day mm -hmm. or not washing, you know, not washing your car or things of that nature. Um, we are not limiting any of those things. What we do have in place is what we call stage zero. And mm -hmm. that's basically, we have normal water supply conditions. However, there are still some things that we want you to keep in mind, which is yeah. don't be stupid about how you're <laughs> yeah, wasting right. water. When you it's know? running down the street, right. you're using it P incorrectly. <laughs> P please don't, please don't um, you know, when, when you wash your car, have it just running onto the, the sidewalk, you know, just put a nozzle on there that's going to automatically shut it off. Mm -hmm. Don't leave your sprinklers on so long that it's going to cause a river to fill up the street gutter like <laughs> you were saying. That's another one that we just can't have you do. If you have a leak, you need to get that thing fixed in a timely mm -hmm. manner. That's important. And then the state has has um, not lifted their emergency yet. Now, we feel like okay. they should have because 
we're at almost 200% of normal precipitation. Mm -hmm. Much of the year we've been tracking above the 1983, I believe, wettest year on record yeah. for most of the state. So it's hard to say that we're still in a statewide drought, but the governor has not decided to lift that yet. Uh, but there are prohibitions under the statewide emergency that include some of the things I just mentioned in terms of um, a, another one was if it's raining, don't have your sprinklers on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so these are kind of common sense things, mm -hmm. uh, but they are prohibited at a statewide level, and, and we are enforcing those as well. Do you think that the drought helped that mindset of, of sort of using water willy-nilly and not caring when it's flowing down the street and that kind of thing? I, I do. I, I mean, and, and I think that, that this is a cycle that we've observed before. Um, mm -hmm. We had a drought in the 70s that was significant. We had a drought in the 90s. And I think with each one, there was a little bit more awareness. But we've also seen kind of people forget about those droughts yeah. and then go back to, to normal water use. And so I, our message right now is... People live in Calaveras County for a certain quality of life, and that includes a certain use of water that's reasonable. And we, mm -hmm. we don't want anyone to to stop living that quality life because they're afraid to use water. We, you know, as I said, those who came before us invested and planned to allow us to have water to use. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that, but we want you to use it in a way that that's wise. And so, as long mm -hmm. as you're not um, wasting water, you know, you should be just fine planting your gardens this year, taking care of a beautiful landscaping, your orchards, your vineyards, all of those things, you know, there's, there's no reason to, to, to rip those out or anything like that. Um, and so, you know, we do have the water resources available and, and, and people can do that. But what we have seen is during the restrictions, people made some permanent decisions. Oh, Lawns okay. came out. Mm -hmm. um, landscaping was ripped out and drought tolerant landscaping was put in. Mm -hmm. We had washing machines get switched out with these very highly efficient ones. Dishwashers, yep. highly efficient dishwashers. Your shower head may be a low flow shower head. Your toilet may only be 1.6 gallons per flush instead of 3 gallons per flush now. <laughs> so that's what we're calling kind of a hardened conservation reduction. Mm -hmm. We're probably not going to get those things back in terms of our, our demand from our customers because mm -hmm. it makes sense. It saves you money. You know, it's still doing the oh, same sure. thing. Yeah. And so I don't think we're going to see things go back to pre-drought levels um, unless we have population increase. And then, then we may see it recover. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's something that, that we're trying to think about with our budget is we're not going to sell as much water, period, because mm -hmm. people made these decisions that, that are permanent. Um, and I don't think that in the next few years people are going to forget right away and go and put a acre lawn in and things of that nature. Yeah. And, and that's probably a good thing. I think that the governor wants water conservation to be a California way of life. And so we would want to balance that with, again, what it means to live in Calaveras and enjoy living here. Perfect. Now, the um, well, not to wade too deeply into the issue, but I'll ask about it because it's something that's... <laughs> pun again intended, percolating right near the surface, and that's growing cannabis in the county. Mm -hmm. What, I guess the question is, has the Board of Supervisors asked CCWD about what it believes any changes in water use may be? Yeah, we, we have taken a really hard look at cannabis as a, a water purveyor because, you know, we, we can see it having a pretty big impact, and we're already mm -hmm. seeing it have an impact to some extent. The interesting thing about cannabis, though, is that the vast majority of it is being irrigated using uh, wells that are drilled in our fractured bedrock, and that okay. has nothing to do with us um, other than if you have too many wells in a certain area and they all go dry, then we may have to come in and expand our surface water supply to, yeah. to serve those people. The Central Valley sinking. <laughs> yeah, and, and fractured water supply is a, you know, it's, it's a very complicated thing. But cannabis, it uses, you know, just as much water as a lot of other irrigated crops. And, you know, some people think it uses more. Some people say, say it's less. But the fact is that those who are growing cannabis who are connected to our system you know, they're certainly using a lot more water than prior to the cannabis. And mm -hmm. so we've seen increases up in West Point, Wilseyville quite a oh, bit. Okay. And I'd say that's really the main area that we've seen. There are some mm -hmm. other, you know, other areas where it seems as though cannabis is growing um, maybe down in the Valley Springs, Copperopolis area, but not, not quite as much as up in the West Point, Wilsonville area. Okay. Um, another thing people should be aware of is um, if, if someone does run out of water and they're irrigating with a well, they can't buy supplemental water from a tank or from CCWD because yeah. we only provide uh, tanked water for people who are doing dust control for con contracting activities. Oh, okay. um, Calaveras Public Utility District 
District, on the other hand, they are willing to sell a tanker truck of water to really whoever needs it for whatever purpose. And mm. so um, they saw their water truck deliveries during um, irrigation season for cannabis just go through the roof and skyrocket. And mm. so there's definitely a need for that. And depending on what the Board of Supervisors does in terms of are we going to ban commercial cannabis or are we going to regulate it more than what we have currently done, mm -hmm. um, that's kind of going to depend on how CCWD reacts. And we would need to bring um, some different staff recommendations back to the board. Um, but let's say, hypothetically, cannabis became you know, a, a major crop that was totally legal. Mm -hmm. um, I would think it would make more sense to try to get raw water to that that's not treated as opposed to oh, okay. mm -hmm. provide them with potable water because they don't need potable water. Use the green irrigation pipe, not the white or blue Ex drinking water pipe. Huh? Exactly. And so, you know, there, there have been discussions about the various ditch systems and things like that okay. and where, where you could provide that water. But, mm -hmm. the, you know, it's really premature to yeah. to look at that closely because we may not not have commercial cannabis allowed in the yeah. county. And so you'd be left with basically the small number of plants that you, you know, can have no matter where you live in the, yeah. in the Which state. Is tantamount to having a small garden. So. Exactly. exactly. Um, we're getting down toward the end of our time here, but CCWD has several projects going on, both coming soon and already, you know, being worked on. Kind of rifle through those real quick. So the biggest one we have going is Reach 3A project. That's the main water transmission line going through downtown Arnold. Okay. And so people living up there have definitely seen, have some, seen some, some construction activity. going on, <laughs> including traffic delays, and we apologize for the inconvenience, but this is a extremely um, leaky old pipeline that needed mm. to be replaced desperately. Yeah. So that one's going um, we also have replaced a lot of redwood tanks that were vulnerable to fire up in yeah. that area. So that's another one. And then we're going all throughout our whole district and we're doing what's called a tank management program where we're basically rehabbing the tanks that we have to make them last even longer so we don't have to replace okay. them. Coming up in the near future, we have multiple um, more um, lines, main water lines that need to be replaced. Same thing with sewer lines, pump stations, lift stations. And all of this is outlined in our five-year capital improvement program plan. Mm -hmm. And that's on ccwd.org. Okay. The budget's there. We're looking at about $38 million worth of projects in an ideal world. We don't have the funding for all of that right mm -hmm. now. So we're actively pursuing grants and, and other ways to make that You've up. You've been very successful in obtaining grants, haven't you? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, we're taking... Not you personally, necessarily. Yeah, you know, the district as a whole. I mean, we're talking millions and millions and millions of mm -hmm. dollars. It's incredible. I, I, it's almost rare to find a project that we don't have at least partially funded don't by grant funding. Grant. Funding. And, uh, you know, that's from the United States Department of Agriculture, Department of Water Resources, California Office of Emergency Services, FEMA. Um, that's another big one. The Butte yeah. fire devastated the Calaveras watershed. Mm -hmm. So we're putting in a, a new pretreatment plant um, in our Jenny Lynn's treatment plant below Hogan um, oh, just to yeah. handle that dirty, terrible water that's coming down the canyon. So yeah. lots going on for lots sure. Lots going on. Yeah. And in... 15 seconds, what's the water message for this summer? The water message is that you can return to using water um, normally while making sure that you're not wasting water. And, um, and enjoy your quality of life up here and, and just don't waste water, but, but make sure that you don't be afraid to use it. There you go. So Joel Metzger, Customer Service Manager for the Calaveras County Water District, thank you so much for being here. You folks, be careful with your water usage because I don't want to see it running down the street. Join us next time on Mondo Calaveras. I'm Mike Taylor. Enjoy.